Next year, Chris Brown does coke. Who cares? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who cares? Who cares? This is a story that keeps rumbling on and on. Whenever someone happens to be in the same vicinity as Chris Brown, preferably some sort of dimly lit light club or some celebrity filled event, someone inevitably catches him, catches him, quote unquote, doing cocaine, right? Which is very odd because it's not as if we didn't know this, not as if he wasn't obviously doing this previously in his, you know, in other occasions that we've seen him do it. But why are people consistently, this is what I don't get, right? Because I, I think maybe I'm not. I'm not celebrity obsessed. I don't really give a shit in general about these people, but I'm not give a shit. But you know, I'm not you know necessarily in a space where I'm going to be around these guys and girls. But I think if you're somebody that is celebrity obsessed and you want to be in part of that world, why would you go somewhere like that? Betr Again, he doesn't know who, who you are, where you are, because I'm assuming this video looks like it's been zoomed in from like the other side of the room. But why you why you betray the trust of your peers and people that you're with in a space and recall someone like Chris Brown doing something like this? I assume in those kind of glitzy, highbrow, A-list celebrity spaces that there's probably a few other people doing some sort of illicit activities. Whether or not it's drugs or partaking in activities that aren't, you know, that all the way legal or whatever it may be, there's people doing things, you know, that they're just doing because they're in a safe space, because they're around people, they're around people who have as much to lose as they do, right? So the understanding is that, look, we're always going to keep each other safe. And I think having come back from Berlin, especially having come back from the Bergheim, you know, and you hear people, all these Hollywood actresses that went to the Bergheim, you know, incognito and went there, had a great time. And you just, you just you're, you're pretty sure whenever I'm in the Ber Ber Bergheim, I'm pretty sure I'm going to bump into a celebrity or two, right? And I always told myself that if I did bump into one, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, look, it's that person, right? I'd just be super cool. If I bumped into him and we happened to cross paths, be like, hey, what's up? I love you this way. Just keep it moving. Because I wouldn't want them to feel as if like somebody is here spying on them, right? I want them to feel as if, oh, I'm going to get my phone out. I want them to be completely caught and chill and just to know that, look, I'm a fan. I love what you do. You know what I mean? That's all it is. Um, so having come from this kind of place, you start to realize just how important, as good, as great as um, putting a sticker of your phone is for us punters, right? Regular people that go to these kind of clubs. It's probably more important for the person that has something to lose, right? Because they at least have the opportunity to be in a space for once that isn't a private member's club, that isn't some snooty, you know, Faluti hotel somewhere where they can actually have a dance get fucked up get all sweaty not care about what they look like because that's something you have to realize too the but most nightclubs especially those kind of nightclubs are set up in that way they're not necessarily you don't you have to go there and show out your best outfit you're not there being you know the you know having the new thing on no one really cares you have to you're basically everyone's there appreciating the music for the most part so imagine being a celebrity or somebody of note or somebody somewhere to lose, going somewhere, just letting your hair down, right? Just being free, being able to have a dance, chill out, talk to your friends, get fucked up, you know, just whatever, just especially with your friends. Imagine be, this is the only time when you're not, maybe when you're not in an Airbnb or in some like hotel or in your mansion somewhere in Beverly Hills, which is probably not as fun, right? Uh, I imagine getting fucked up in the Beverly Hills mansion just with you and your friends isn't as fun as being anonymous in a crowd full of thousand people dancing to thumping techno on the Bergheim main floor, right? Um, so being able to like reconnect with your friends again in that kind of environment, maybe your friends miss having you around in that capacity because you're this big celebrity person that they can't necessarily go to a club with anymore because you get stopped or you get taken, people ask you to get pictures or all all the time. So being able to be with your friend who's as high, this celebrity person, just be able to chill out is amazing. But you have people like this who record a video of Chris Brown doing coke in a nightclub and you're like, why are you doing this? And also, why do you care? But I'm also happy that, for the most part, I play in the background because there's no sound to it. But you know, he's at the whatever doing whatever he's, he he wants to do at the at the back of the nightclub. I'm also quite happy that, for the most part, no one seems to care, right? It, the only people that care a lot about this are I don't know people that recall shit. This it seems that for the most part, the internet doesn't really give a shit that he does what he does outside now. And I'm liking because I think I hearken it a little bit to cancel culture a little bit in that regard it feels as if we're suddenly we're moving on a bit i think cancel culture obviously still affects people that are in the mid to low tier of celebrity or notoriety in general right i think sometimes you can't there's there's only some there's only some some amount of bounce that you can do right because you if you get if, if if you're in the middle to low class of a celebrity or somebody of influence there's going to be a couple of jobs that you already have that are in the works that will get taken away from you immediately right any appearances that you get, you you were scheduled to do will get cancelled. So usually it's hard to bounce back from those two hits because usually you're working check, check to check, you're clear, your checks from the other appearances haven't haven't cleared yet. But when you're at the top tier, you have enough residual income, you have enough income streams, right? You money's working for you while you're just sleeping. That even if they decide to cancel a couple of your up and coming appearances, you just have to weather out that storm, weather the storm for like a couple of months, and then once that storm's weathered out, 
those guys will come back around again and you'll be back on normal again. But for the middle to low tier, they can't really afford to weather out a storm. But I'm happy to see for the most part, if you're big, if you're high enough person or high, especially somebody like Chris Brown who's gone through enough adversity as it is, he's, he's been, people have attempted to cancel him numerous amounts of times. It's now got to a stage where like, you know, like people accept that he's quite, not problematic, but he has, he's a person, right? He has, um, he has flaws. He has public flaws. He's not afraid to kind of show them. He's not afraid to be vulnerable online, right? That pitch, that image, that uh, clip recently where he was tweeting his, he was commenting on Rena's picture and saying, oh, he wishes he was a lamp, right? Now he's selling the lamp in his merch store. That, that he's not afraid to act a fool in public anymore. He's kind of, he's kind of suddenly finally accepted the meme of, of he's a bit of a train wreck, which has kind of helped his kind of public persona. People have kind of accepted him for the most part. And he's insanely talented, right? It's one of those kind of things you have to realize that he made some mistakes when he was younger, but by and large, he has kept his nose clean, no pun intended, and, you know, just kept doing his thing. But I just can't understand the, 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 the outcry behind stuff like this, especially in hip hop, where it seems as if, you know, I love Lil Got It, for instance, right? One of my favorite new up and coming rappers at the moment, uh, the brother of Lil Keed. He was on No Jumper a few a few kind of episodes back, and he was openly asking, um, you know, Adam if he wanted a perk, right? He was popping perks as he was whilst he was talking to him. He had a perk in his cup. He was fucked up, right? Completely fucked, and whatever else he was doing beforehand. And that was seen as, you know, oh my god, he's going crazy. And he came back the next time and tried to clean his image up. But it's a really, it was a kind of accepted thing. No one really said nothing about it right people get fucked up on lean all the time and no one's really making a big deal of it you got videos of people double cupping and sipping lean or what appears to be lean or whatever maybe prescription drugs and it seems to be part of the charm right part of the character of the person part of their package but say that same person whips out a little tray a little mirror and racks up and does a couple of lines everyone's outraged oh my god it's crazy How you doing? it's like i don't understand these double standards like and what's worse for you really right coke is really hard to get and really expensive Prescription drugs, by the most part, for the most part in America, are quite easy to get a hold of, right? Especially on the black market. Um, especially if you've got some sort of ailment or some sort of injury or some sort of medical condition, you can get a hold of prescription drugs quite quite easily. And alcohol is easy, you know, for the most part. If you're over age or if you're of age, you can get alcohol anywhere you want to. So what's more, what's more, what's um, what has a worse effect on you or is to your detriment in, in the long term? Coke, that's hard to get a hold of and very expensive, or prescription drugs are everywhere and alcohol doesn't mean and especially in la where weed is illegal too it's like come on man well, why are people freaking out so much and you know if any if we know if we read anything about books in terms of musicians from back in the day i've got one here actually that kind of speaks about it here keep on get it from my back this book here right um called please, please kill me the uncensored history of punk this is from the punk days right you know what was popular during the punk days heroin heroin was a big big drug back in the day heroin not cocaine, not cat, not pills, not molly, not MDMA, not prescription drugs, coke, heroin. But it was a comment, and then, you know, as, as the cocaine epidemic, you know, flooded the US market, that also started to take a hold. But that was the biggest drug back in the day. And everyone used to do it. It's just an open secret that everyone was doing um, cocaine, right? Or doing some sort of drugs. I've got this other book called uh, Please Meet Me in the Bathroom that also um, kind of details that whole era of people, especially during the indie scene. It's just part, parcel of the entertainment industry, right? And I've always mentioned it prior, 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 I think even with my comparison with someone like a Ben UFO and a, and like a Ricardo Bell Lobos, I'm sorry, but I'm the type of person that likes to see my DJs having fun and getting fucked up. Like that David Vunk guy from Holland that I saw play at the at Dick Mantle and Boiler Room a, a couple of years, oh no, or last season. And I thought, oh shit, this guy's awesome. And I followed him and I saw him play at Gris Milo and went to go to Berlin. I quite, I like my DJs a bit of character. I like them a bit, you know, a little bit off kilter. Because part and parcel of the reason why you got into music was the feeling that it gave you when you were younger and you, I don't know, you might have done a couple of things here and there and it kind of gave you this weird feeling. You're attached to the music. You, you, you identified with some of these people. You might have got involved. You might have thrown a couple of parties and suddenly now you're part of the culture. So to see a DJ out there that's like, you know, clean and proper and, you know, not really doing much and, you know, all about the yoga and the fruit juices, you're a bit like, Ugh. it's not the same. This is just me personally, right? So I quite like my, my entertainers and my, um, you know, my free thinkers and my weirdos and, you know, in, in the celebrity world to be a little bit off kilter. It quite, it makes them a little bit more endearing, right? For all the ills of Kanye West recently with this whole Jesus stuff, it's quite cool to see that he's quite a divisive figure, even now in his 40s, right? He's still courting, courting controversy, even when he's in the church. It's quite interesting. It's a bit more interesting than the vanilla sort of Taylor Swift, whose biggest issue was the fact that Kanye West ran on stage and, you know, took away her five minutes of fame, right? ages ago that's her biggest controversy in life but for the most part everyone else has been fucking safe into the to the book and really vanilla 
I'm not really interested in that. I want my, de- my intent to be a bit more, you know, a little bit, have a, some lifetime. So if, if Chris Brown wants to go out there and do some coke and have a good time, let him enjoy himself. I don't see the issue here. I really don't. If you get your music on time, if he performs at festival, if he performs his concerts, if he tours around the world, doesn't really miss shows, for the most part puts on incredible performances that go on for fucking two hours and he's dancing the whole time, singing live. What are you to complain about? I don't care. If he's doing coke, give him more coke to keep going to do the tour and continue putting out. That. No wonder he's making albums that are like 55 songs deep. There's no way you can do that if you're, if you're fucking sober. You just get tired and want to go home. <laughs> so I don't get But again, I'm happy to see for the most part, no one really cares. Everyone's just kind of chilling out. And again, to the person that recorded the video, you're a loser. You're an absolute loser. To be in that space in the first place, right? To be around the celebrities, you're obviously trying to get in and around the scene. You want to get up the ladder and you want to, you know, whatever. Cool. Just hang out and be a good, good, and be a good, so be a good company. Don't betray the trust of people in that space and be the only person. Because she looked at the only she, that was a, he or she was the only person recording, or the video, the only video that kind of got out of him doing it, like zooming in and recording Chris Brown. It's just like that's why those that's why it's so important. Places like Bergheim exist, those safe spaces, or even private members club like So House and all that sort of stuff, or Shoreditch House and stuff. Like those why that's why they exist, right? Because you need somewhere to go to if you're somebody of influence or somebody whatever it may be that you can go and let your hair down and chill out and have a good time without people recording you and trying to end your career, quote unquote. But again, you can't really end Chris Brown's career. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's made too many good songs. He's too talented. He's got too much money. Um, unfortunately, if you're a level just below Chris Brown or, under, or just at the bottom, of, you probably shouldn't be doing that, right? You probably should need to stay away from any kind of controversy and just keep your head down and keep it moving. But yeah, um, I don't care. I really don't care. And again, shame to that person to record the video. Like, get a life, man. Honestly, get a life.